What is good YouTube and welcome back to a brand new video and today we're going to be doing the Memphis Grizzlies side of things on the trade that happened on I don't even remember what day it was now but it was obviously the Steven Adams Jonas Valanciunas trade and today we're doing the Steven Adams side of things so if you guys enjoy this video make sure to smash that like but of course subscribe if you haven't already man we're on the road to 19,000 subs and after that man is the big 20k 20k is gonna be such an amazing feeling so thank you guys so much for your support you guys have been amazing crush nation is super strong other than that, guys, let's go ahead and jump right in to this Memphis Grizzlies rebuild video. To recap the trade, just in case you live under a rock, um, the Grizzlies got, or uh, the Grizzlies traded Valanciunas, a 17th pick, a second round pick, and uh, for Steven Adams, Eric Bledsoe, a future first, or, or for the 10th pick, a future 2022 first round pick from the Lakers, and then a uh, earlier second, I think. I can't remember what the seconds were. They're not that important to me, but regardless... Um, you also found Judas Steven Adams is basically the big part of this trade. And then I guess moving up seven spots in the draft is pretty exciting for the Grizzlies as well. Yesterday we did the Pelican side of things. We all know how OP the Pelicans are. So make sure you guys watch this video. But honestly, thinking about it now, honestly, you know, at what I first thought, I thought that the Pelicans had won this trade by far or whatever. But if you really think about it, Steven Adams actually is a pretty good fit here in Memphis because... You got a guy like Jaron Jackson right next to him who could obviously launch threes all day. So that actually makes a lot of sense. So the floor spacing won't suffer all that much. It's not like you have two guys down low that can't shoot at all like some teams have done in the past. Um, so Steven Adams, Jaron Jackson, I think would be a, a nice front court. Obviously, Adams can be the bruiser inside. So I kind of like this, actually. I kind of do. And Adams is still, you know, on the right side of 30. I think this is actually a pretty underrated move. And moving up seven spots is actually pretty awesome for Memphis as well. Now, I will tell you. I have no draft connoisseur, so I have no idea who the Grizzlies are going to take in this draft. I just took John Juzang at number 10. I do not how I do not know uh, who they will actually be taking. If this was a bad pick, I apologize. But uh, I saw some articles saying they were going to uh, Josh Giddy was the talk. But for some reason, Josh Giddy is not in this draft class. I don't know why. So player options. Winslow has a $13 million team option. I think that is safe to decline that. Unless if the Memphis Grizzlies felt like they could trade it away. But I think the Grizzlies have cap space, so there's no reason to really do that right now. Uh, qualifying offers none, and then free agency obviously ahead of us. But looking at it, so you got John Morant, Tyus Jones in the point guard spot. You have Grayson Allen, DeAnthony Mellon, and Bledsoe. Oh, obviously Bledsoe we do have to address because uh, it has already been said that uh, Grizzlies do not expect to keep Eric Bledsoe. So that's going to obviously be either a buyout or a trade. Now, I don't think, I don't think a trade will happen because his salary is just really high. Um, I feel like it'll probably end up in a buyout situation. Um, that's what I think. I don't know. I could see and Maybe they end up trading him. I don't know. Uh, maybe he's in a big trade. It's not going to be, you know, so I don't think any teams are going to line up to trade for Eric Bledsoe to take on his $18 million contract. Unless if the Thunder were like, oh, you're going to give me a first round pick. Sure. Uh, but uh, Bogdan Madonovich, Kevin Herter. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong team now. What am I doing? Okay. Uh, small fours, Dylan Brooks, Desmond Bain, John Jazang. So we have a lot of wing players right now. Uh, which is fine and then jared jackson kyle anderson brandon clark and then uh stephen adams xavier tillman so definitely an interesting roster we have going here i think it is pretty important to note that we could definitely make this team even better but let's go ahead and start things off with getting rid of eric bledsoe so honestly we could make a big trade with eric bledsoe's salary right now we could do that uh if we weren't going to keep him which i don't expect the grizzlies to do uh i think chris haynes reported that I don't know who would trade for Bledsoe. He's still a very solid, probably backup guard. Uh, but I, like I said, he's not going to be some game-changing point guard that the Bucks thought he might be when they tr initially traded for him. So the Hornets are lining up, but I don't think that's going to happen. So either what I'm going to do is either I'm going to buy him out, which in 2K, basically all you do is release him, and then you, you have to pay a salary for like uh, one year. Or I could keep him here, and he just kind of rots on the bench. I don't know. And then just decline his team option. Might do that as well. That actually sounds like a better idea. Uh, just because I don't know how 2k works if I released him I don't know how that team option would work I don't know if it would counter it against me as well so let's not do that so um other than that I think the only thing I want to do so shooting guard the other mountain Grayson Allen I think I want to move Brooks to shooting guard just because I think that's what I kind of want him to do so he's six seven uh actually he goes down so never mind I do not want to do that actually so Desmond Bain though he is six five if I move him to shooting guard does he go down as well um he goes down by one. That's not too bad. So we'll move Desmond Bain to the shooting guard because I want Desmond Bain and Brooks to be starters, I think. And then Jaron Jackson and Steven Adams, obviously, because Desmond Bain definitely had some uh, good spots. Or Grayson Allen could start too. I mean, it really doesn't matter. But Bledsoe uh, is going to be gone. De'Anthony Melton is going to be in the rotation as well, but off the bench. And then Xavier Tillman. So, I mean, 
And for free agency, I don't think I'll be doing anything special. I know Kyle Anderson's a free agent. I think that I'm not going to really wor worry about him too much. We kind of have a full rotation as it is. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, try to get rid of Bledsoe. I think that's the only thing I'm really going to do this offseason because the Grizzlies are pretty good as it is. So, I mean, I guess I'll just do it. I don't know how his salary is going to affect me. But um, when we look at uh, the finances, I can break down. Does it show up already? It does not. So usually what happens is it counts your salary against, you know, the salary counts against you for one year and then it's gone after that. So that's what I could kind of see happening with the Memphis Grizzlies in real life. But we'll have to wait and kind of see how that works. So let's go to player progression and kind of see how this is going to go. Because like I said, my prediction is that the Grizzlies will end up buying him out just because unless if it's he's part of some big trade, there's not, there's not going to be a team. I don't think that's going to line up to trade for him. I think it's going to either be a salary filler and a trade or it's going to be bought out which I am going to go ahead and be a betting man and say he gets bought out. So 2022 draft class, training camps, we got um, how many untapped potential? And I also got to see the head coach of the Grizzlies is right now because for some reason, Taylor Jenkins is just gone in this file. I don't know where the hell he went, but I cannot find him. I cannot hire him back. He's just gone. He, he must have retired after being so old. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand it. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, see who my coach is real quick because that is definitely going to be important I honestly have a weird feeling that it's like an F head coach actually it's Michael Stauffer so whatever Scotty Penn uh, my you know assistant coaches could be better I'm gonna go I can't fire him right now okay whatever so we'll just we'll just run with it and then going to next season power ranking lens is number six so looking at our rotation if we run a nine minute rotation on 11 so we have D'Anthony Melton starting at shooting guard actually okay so John Morant Anthony Mellon, Dylan Brooks, Jaron Jackson, Steven Adams, Brandon Clark, Kyle Anderson actually came back. Why? I didn't wait. Was he still under contract? He might have still been under contract. I just didn't even realize. So Kyle Anderson, Tillman, Grayson Allen, John Juzang, Desmond Bain. There's a lot of guys not even under uh, in the rotation right now. So that's a little unfortunate, but it is what it is. I mean, we don't necessarily need Kyle Anderson and Brandon Clark, though. Although Brandon Clark, I think, played himself out of the rotation towards the end of the year, if I remember correctly. So I also want to do this. I kind of want to move. Uh, D'Anthony Melton as not a starter just because I don't see him as a starter. So we're going to go ahead and make sure he doesn't start just because I think we should probably be starting Grayson Allen over him. Uh, so force non-starter. Grayson Allen jumps in there. That's fine with me. Uh, so Dylan Brooks, Jaron Jackson, Adams, Clark, Kyle Anderson. Um, I guess the only thing we could do is maybe we can move Kyle Anderson to a backup small forward just because that'll be a little bit better. So we'll have that. Kyle Anderson will start over Dylan Brooks, which... Um, actually doesn't work for me. Um, do we just trade Kyle Anderson? No, I, I'll keep him here. I'm going to keep him here off the bench. Uh, we're going to take away some of his minutes though. So we'll have Dylan Brooks, obviously one of those giddy, gritty guys that the Grizzlies love. So proficiency wise, we're sitting at a three and a half balance or three and a half, seven seconds. Usually seven seconds or balance is pretty good to run. So I'll just go ahead and run with a seven seconds today. We'll move Michael Stoffer to seven seconds. Kind of looks like Taylor Jenkins in a way, but not really. Let's go ahead, though, simulate the rest of the season and see how this Memphis Grizzlies team finishes up with Steven Adams in the roster now. At the end of the season, we finish up as a nice fifth seed here in the Western Conference, which is impressive because the West, as we all know, is stacked. So if the Grizzlies can make the playoffs every year, that would definitely put them in a very good position to eventually probably be a contender. I mean, right now, I love the core of Jaron Jackson, John Morant. You got Steven Adams now. Uh, Brandon Clark, I don't know what they'll do with him eventually, but we are the fifth seed right now and going up against the Los Angeles Lakers. So that doesn't really bode well for us because usually the Lakers are pretty, you know, pretty good. So 24 points from John Morant, 19 from Jaron Jackson. You got 15 from Dylan Brooks and 12 from Brandon Clark, uh, 11 from Xavier Tillman, 11 from Grayson Allen, and then eight and a half and nine from Steven Adams. And then Kyle Anderson with seven, Melton with seven, Desmond Bain with one. Okay. So we are, like I said, going up against the Lakers. So, uh, I'm not really sure what to expect here, but there could easily be a result of a loss in the first round so somebody current round uh and it looks like we are gonna lose in five games so we did make the postseason get him unfortunately we just get eliminated in the first round year after year also i want to show you guys this so what what had happened is when i released eric blood so it did count his 18 million dollars against me and then it also is going to count his team option against me for the next two years which is actually quite annoying because that's not guaranteed money but it is what it is. I had a weird feeling that it would do that, but six million won't kill us too much because this team doesn't have a lot of you know players that it's paying. We're gonna have to pay Jaron Jackson, of course, but um, we have John Morant still under a rookie contract, so it's fine. So let's go ahead and submit the rest of the playoffs, though. And we got the Pelicans going on to win the championship, of course. Why? Why wouldn't? It, why would it not be the Pelicans winning the championship today? All right, well, let's keep going to the draft lottery, my friends. Draft lottery time. We have no pick here. Um, we are actually, we had the 10th pick be the Utah Jazz. I think that might be from the 
I Conley trade, I assume. Um, that I don't know what else it'd be from. So 10th pick, okay. So we could draft here, but for some reason, you know, I just have this feeling in my stomach, in my stomach, I guess I should say, that um, it is time to make a little bit of a move here. Like, uh, you know, a little bit of a move that's going to make us a uh, quote-unquote contender in the West. Could we do that today is the question. Michael Stoffer's getting paid so damn much that I can't even hire an assistant coach right now. Like, okay, boom, got one, I guess. Um, we be my other one? Sure. All right, so we got Michael Stoffer, new head coach, new, new coach, or new assistant coaching. Okay, so we have the 10th pick in the draft. Uh, we have, who do we have under current? We have Dylan Brooks, we have Anthony Melton, we have Josh Zang. Okay, if I kind of, you know, scan the league real quick, I don't know who I'd want, but we also have free agency ahead of us, so we might be able to sign a free agent. So let me just look. So I'm kind of thinking either a shooting guard slash small forward. That would be interesting to bring, you know, next to John Morant and Jaron Jackson. I don't know who I have at the top of my head right now, but I'm just kind of, you know, scanning the market. But I kind of want to make a move, you know, put this team over the top if possible. So I don't know what that move will entail, but it might be fun to grab someone. So uh, just kind of look at Devin Booker. Hey, the sun sucked. No, ironically enough, the Suns actually signed Eric Bledsoe, which is kind of funny if you think about it. Chris Paul ended up back in Oklahoma City. Wow, okay. Um, we got, you know, the Timberwolves. You know, with Carly Towns there. You got uh, Anthony Edwards. You got D'Andrew Russell. So that could be, you know, somebody. CJ McCollum, if we want to make a move like win now move and CJ. But I'm not going to do that. Um, Zach Levine. I honestly think we might be able to just assign a free agent, to be honest. If we didn't want to make some big trade here. So, you know, maybe we'll do that. Let's go ahead and see what uh, salary cap will look like this offseason. I think we're going to have enough money to do something. So, um, if not, obviously, we could definitely um, draft someone else. Oh, Michael Foster. We have a lot of power forwards, but, you know, maybe we could use him in a trade later on. So, we probably had two draft picks. That's my bad. We had three, actually. So, actually, we have pretty... We have a pretty good amount of players coming in from this draft. Wow. Okay. So, we're going to sign all these guys. Qualifying offers, Grayson Allen, Jaron Jackson, both free agents. All right, so free agency, uh, we have Jaron Jackson is a free agent. All right, so looking at our salary cap situation as of right now, if I go to finances, we're negative $9 million in cap space, but I assume that's because there's a lot of cap holds right now. So Kyle Anderson, I will not be bringing back. Tyus Jones, probably not. Um, so we only have $14 million, uh, well, 20, technically 20. Adam, 17 million. Dylan Brooks is counting against us. John Morant, 12 million. Anthony Melton, 8 million. Okay. So we probably wouldn't be able to sign anyone too crazy in free agency. Uh, what? Yeah, so I can't afford anyone like insane. Colin Sexton, though, would be interesting, but I don't know. I don't know. Hold on. Um, Jimmy Buckets, uh, Michael Porter Jr. We could afford Michael Porter. Um, kind of. All right. All positions. Uh, not affordable. Let's just go all positions. So obviously, Luca, some of these guys are not going to be possible to get, but... You know, a guy like Zach Levine or throwing an offer at uh, Shea. You got DeAndre Ayton, Jaron Jackson, Michael Porter. So, obviously, I want Michael Porter back. Sexton would be fun to get as well. Jonas Valanciunas is a free agent now. Nurkic, Erozier, Marvin Bagley, Mikel Bridges. I always love Mikel Bridges. A 3 and D wing player that just does a lot that you need him to do. I kind of like him in Memphis. I kind of like that fit. Right now, our small forward is Dylan Brooks. If we wanted to change a pace, that could be interesting. We could throw him some money and kind of see what would happen there. I don't know if we'd get him, but let me go ahead and do that. And I also want to offer Jaron Jackson his money as well, because obviously don't want to lose Jaron Jackson. Can I sign both of them though? I can't, I can't sign both of them. Okay. So I can't sign both of them. I figured as much. Uh, so we'll sign Jaron Jackson. Actually, he's going to come back and his qualifying offer now. So that actually might open up some opportunities. So, uh, okay. For some reason though, we have so much players. So many players that I feel like I should just make a trade. I really feel like I should just make a trade. And then maybe I could still sign Mikel Bridges as well. And then maybe make a trade for a shooting guard. Maybe we just go crazy this offseason. Um, I could still sign him. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign Mikel Bridges. I love Mikel Bridges. 3 and D wing player. Ideal. Ideal as hell. Boom. We got that. So Mikel Bridges is our new starting small forward. After that, we have a lot. So Dylan Brooks salary could help us. Right now, I'm looking for a starting shooting guard, I think, next to John Morant. We have our starters, Jaron Jackson, Steven Adams. We can get a 3 and D shooting guard. It's a wrap for the league. It's a wrap for the league. Or maybe not even a 3 and D shooting guard, just anyone, to be honest. So, I'm going to look again. 
I'm gonna find the shooting guard I want, and I'm gonna pair him next to Donovan or next to John Morant. Donovan Mitchell at the top of my head sounds kind of fun though. Not gonna lie, Utah sucks. Donovan Mitchell, John Morant backcourt. Ooh, that sounds like fun. That sounds like fun, man. I don't know. Could I make that happen? That was the question. It's looking kind of nice if I could do it. I don't know if I could do it though. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine though? A Donovan Mitchell, John Morant backcourt. Dude, I'm, I'm trying it. I don't know if he would do it. Okay, hold on. I have a lot of assets. Let's say, you know, the Jazz sucked, as you can see in the game. Let's say Mitchell's like, all right, I'm out. Get me out of here. I could offer you... I got, I got Dylan Brooks. All right. I got uh, De'Anthony Melton. Obviously, we have a lot of young players we can offer as well. So, this is going to be the basis of the trade. All right. And then, obviously, we don't trade any of these guys. But I give you uh, Desmond Bain, maybe. Desmond Bain. He's your new shooting guard after Don Mitchell's gone. I also give you Harrison Ingram, who I just drafted. Um, this trade so far is not looking that good. John Juzang. And a future first. How are you feeling about this? How are we feeling about this, Utah? They're not interested. Damn it. Okay. Um, what else we got? Um, can we offer? Wait, do we offer Brennan Clark? Maybe. We could. We could definitely do that. Brennan Clark. I mean, he is cool and all, but I feel like he might get this trade to go through. Um. All right. Let me do this. Let me remove Johnny Juzang. Let me throw Brennan Clark in there. Yeah, his, his his trade and Michael Foster. Actually, not both of them. Although, okay, Michael Foster's trade value is pretty damn good. So maybe we don't have to throw... Maybe we don't necessarily have to throw Brandon Clark in there. We can throw uh, Michael Foster in there instead. They don't agree just yet. Okay. If I threw Harrison Ingram, they don't agree. Okay. Um, What else we got? DJ Stewart, you want a point guard? No. Okay. Um, All right. I'm gonna make this work. I'm gonna make this work. Um, who's my small four? So Juzang and then Clark would be uh, Mikael Bridges. Oh, I'm not throwing Mikael Bridges in there. I didn't mean to do that. Um, all right. So if I threw John Juzang in there, would they accept this? They do. They accept it. So we got Donovan Mitchell to pair up with John Morant, man. Oh my goodness. We have John Morant, DJ Stewart. We have Donovan Mitchell in the backcourt with them and Bryce Thompson. We have Mikael Bridges, John Kachar, and Harrison Ingram have jared jackson we kept brandon clark as well and xavier tillman and steven adams oh my goodness man uh the only thing i kind of don't love is uh harrison ingram is fine um definitely could be interesting i think i kind of want to get a better guard rotation um so do i have you know the ability to sign a free agent we have trade oh we can sign Tyus jones back let's just sign Tyus jones back boom all right now we have our new roster man okay this roster looks kind of clean. This this rotation about to look kind of clean. Player progression: John Morant, Mitchell, Jaron Jackson, Clark, Mikael Bridges, Adams, bro. Oh my goodness, dude. I don't know, man. I feel like this might be my favorite team I've ever built. Probably not, but still, I've barely done anything with this video. It's just like, dude, a John Morant, Donovan Mitchell backcourt just sounds like holy moly. On top potential, let's throw um, at uh, let's throw at Mikael Bridges. Let's throw the other one at. Brandon Clark, I guess. And let's throw the last one at Mr. Xavier Tillman, who eventually might become our starter. I don't know. Our ranking lens is number two. And obviously, we got to compete with the Pelicans as well. So, we built ourselves a little bit of a super team here, I feel like. Our bench could be better, but it's fine. Clark, obviously, being an 84 overall definitely helps. Xavier Tillman at 80. Ingram. Okay. I like it. I like it. Proficiency-wise, we're four stars, seven seconds. I mean, if this team doesn't make the playoffs, I don't know what, you know, what team would make the playoffs. So, let's go ahead and sell it to the end of the season. John Morant and Donovan Mitchell leading the way. Let's see what happens. This season, Trey Young's your MVP. Chad Holmgren, Rookie of the Year. Karis Avert, Six Man, Eyes Defense Player. Isaiah Todd, Most Improved. And Willie Green is your Coach of the Year. Executive of the Year goes to Dylan Shaw. And then here's your NBA First Team. Trey Young, Luka, Giannis, LeBron, Embiid. All NBA Second Team, Cade Cunningham, Harden, KD, Zion, Nikola Jokic. And here's your All NBA Third Team with John Morant making it as well. So, we are the third seed in the West, going 55 and 27. Looking at the player stats, we had 31 from Donovan Mitchell, 25 from John Morant, and 19 Jared Jackson, 11 from Clark, 10 from Xavier Tillman, 9 from Steven Adams, and Harrison Ingram was 7. Mikel Bridges was 6.5. I mean, I feel like this team should make the playoff or should get past the first round, make it all the way to West Conference Finals if possible. Somebody curve around against Minnesota, and we beat them in five. 
Now we get to play the Los Angeles Lakers, which is going to be a little bit tougher. They ended up getting Russell Westbrook like they usually do. Somehow they drafted Moses Moody, I guess, and then they have Drummond. So yeah, this could actually be a tough ask. So we're up 1-0, though, to start things off. Uh, they even it up. Game three, we're up 2-1. to one. Game four. Okay, so it is a pretty close series. I feel like we should probably move this to an eight-man rotation and just kind of hope for the best here. So game five, we're up 3-2. to two. And game six, nope, game seven. So game seven. All right, here we go. This is for all the marbles, man. Uh, we're going to make it to the West Conference Finals if we get past this team. Timcast, you know, we always go to war with the LA Lakers, it seems like. Can we win this series to go on to the West Conference Finals is the question. It's looking pretty good right now, but you never know. And yeah, we beat them. So 135, 122, embarrassed them in LA. 33 from Donna Mitchell, 37 from Jared Jackson. That's huge. And now we get a battle of New Orleans and Memphis. So we got... Lonzo Ball, James Bunai, Ingram, Zion, Jonas Valanciunas, Jackson Hayes. I'm glad they kept Valanciunas. They have Odipo as well. So this could be tough. Uh, game one, though, we're up 1-0. So 25 from Brandon Ingram, 37 from Donovan Mitchell. Game two, they even it up. Game three, we're up 2-1. to one. Game four, let's go. 3-1. to one. Damn it. Okay. Game five, we're up 3-2. to two. Ah, game seven again. All right, here we go. Give less minutes to Steven Adams. Sure, why not? So Steven Adams versus his former team. Jonas Valanciunas versus his former team. Who comes out on top? It's a very close game. Actually, it's not that close anymore. The Memphis or the Pelicans are going to demolish us here. That's unfortunate. That is very, very unfortunate, man. Damn it. All right. Well, uh, I think we uh, run it back one more time, right? One more time for the culture. Uh, the Pelicans going to win the championship, of course. Back-to-back -back champions. We almost dethroned them. Almost doesn't count, though, unfortunately. So, um, I don't think I'll be doing too much this offseason. I think I'll try to keep you know everything relatively the same. Let's go to the draft and uh let's go ahead and see what the draft uh we don't have a pick because obviously we kind of made some big moves so we'll sign everybody there and qualifying offers uh we'll definitely want to bring john moran back of course and then jared jackson is a free agent as well again so jared jackson let's go ahead and pay you and then adams actually kind of want to pay him for 19 million because he's a good fit next to jared jackson and then we'll sign those two and john moran's getting an offer of course we're going to match that so, and then Brandon Clark's is a big offer. Wow. That's a little hefty, but I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't know if the Grizzlies would do that in real life, though, if I'm completely honest with you. Uh, but, hey, this team is on the cusp of winning a championship. So, I feel like it was kind of worth it. Let's go to next season and hope for the best. And points and 15 assists gives him the MVP award. We're the first seed in the West. We go up against the Dallas Mavericks in the first round. So, 31 uh, 27 from Donovan Mitchell, 21 from Jared Jackson, and 11 from Brandon Clark, and 11 from Xavier Tillman. The Dallas Mavericks, Luca, Evan Fournier, Green, Terran Frank, Chris Asperger against Hardaway, Montero, Tyrell Terry, and Kofi Cockburn. So many current round against the Dallas Mavericks, and we beat them in six. So if we can beat the Dallas Mavericks, we can beat anybody, I think. The Lakers, though, is definitely going to be another tough task. So many current round against them, and we beat them in six. And this time, we don't have to deal with the Pelicans. This time, we got the Houston Rockets. We have Russell Westbrook back. They have Grady, Jalen Green, Jeremiah Robinson, Earl, Holmgren, Porter Jr., Wiggins. Okay, definitely could be a tough matchup. So in current round, though, and wow, we got reverse swept 3-0, to zero, bro. That all happened so fast. And the Magic going to win the championship. Mark Kelly Foles, final MVP. So unfortunately, we couldn't wrap up a ring here for the Memphis Grizzlies, but wow, we are one game away from the media finals and got reverse swept. 3-0. to 3-0 zero. Three to zero is just so common in 2K, man. It's like it's happened in real life plenty of times, but it hasn't. Well, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't already. But for now, it's Crushables. I'm staying.